What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Tonight in Haddonfield. Uh, shorter episode for you guys tonight, and one of the reasons for that is uh, we have two jam-packed episodes coming for you next week. On Monday night, we will be joined at a special start time of 8 o'clock Eastern time. We will be joined by James Grimm, and I believe... Uh, possibly Cole as well, alongside uh, maybe their lead actor and actress. So might be a full round table of just Halloween aftermath talk and Halloween talk. And uh, that is the go-to for Monday. And then Tuesday night, uh, Mike Bish will be rejoining us again. The three of us will get into all sorts of, uh, all sorts of trouble. And then the week after we'll have uh, Chris Christensen on here and uh, we'll be doing some mask making. So we are, plenty busy here uh you know what the, yeah. the bish episode might end up being a watch along okay we'll see if we can uh all agree on a movie and, and maybe watch it together and just have some fun with it but uh we'll see what he thinks of that but man um it's been an insanely busy couple of weeks i won't lie i'm not feeling great right now um uh so you got two struggling people here uh but i'm excited to be here talking halloween mm-hmm. and um how are you man i'm By exhausted <laughs> Fucking incredible setup behind you. Little, it was a lot of work. Uh, I mentioned to you guys that I was going to be doing this, and uh, last week I got around to getting out, getting the shelving I needed, and finally was able to shift things around. And I still, it's still a work in progress. I still have to kind of readjust and reorganize some things. But I now have three of these big shelves. There's another shorter one right behind me, and then the tall cabinet is going to get shifted all around as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, it's been a lot of work, but uh, I can now house this collection a little more properly. Uh, well, it looks great. The lighting looks better, too. It's uh, We're all in for a treat. It's a treat for us all. Um, we, we're late getting to it, but we got a bit of a Halloween March Madness tournament to do, and uh, we'll kick the show off by at least previewing the bracket. And we made a last-minute change to the bracket as well. Uh, originally, Halloween 78 was going to be in the bracket, and we got talking in our staff chat about, well, it's probably easily predictable who's going to end up winning the main bracket then if 78's yeah. in it. So, you know, being uh, we have a Legacy Halloween Facebook group and channel outside of Fandom Empire, uh, why don't we do a Legacy matchup of Halloween 78 versus whoever wins the actual tournament? So in a way, Halloween 78 is involved, but what we have here is kind of a NFL-style playoff bracket where you have Halloween 2018, going up against Halloween 6, the producer's cut, and the winner of that uh, will go on to face Halloween 3 in round 2. You have Halloween Kills in Rob Zombie's Halloween 1, and the winner of that will go up against Halloween 2 in round 2. You have Halloween 5 versus Rob Zombie's Halloween (laughs) 2, and they will go up against uh, Halloween 4, whichever one wins there. And then Halloween Ends versus Halloween Resurrection, Dean's favorite matchup of round one. Uh, the winner will take on Halloween H2O. Uh, the winner of uh, what what will happen is like people only got about six or seven hours to vote on round one. So mm-hmm. round one was very condensed. But round two, voting will begin tomorrow and not end until next Monday before the show. Okay. Um, so we'll be going a whole week. Uh, so the March Madness winner will indeed be revealed in April, but we got it started in March. That's what counts. Yeah, that'll count. uh, so we'll have round two uh, results, April 1st, final f- uh, four results when we're on here uh, with Chris, and then the finals the following week, followed by the legacy matchup. So it'll be a fun little, they won't take up the whole show by any means, but uh, just a little segment. And today is a shorter show. So we figured why not start with this and uh, Dean, before we, uh, uh, get into anything else. We know we're going to talk Scream. And honestly, we might do show and tell as the main event tonight here. Oh. So well, it's already up on screen. Why don't we talk about it here? Halloween 2018 versus Halloween 6. If you were the only one mm-hmm. deciding uh, which one of these two would be winning, who are you taking and why? And this is uh, in terms of the best Halloween movie. Yeah. Um, I like 6. I like the producer's cut over theatrical um just for the fact that it it leans more towards original it's got the more original score it's got more loomis um story gets a little bit wacky but um it's you know by the end i think it kind of comes together a little bit better than theatrical although you get more gore and um a little more action in, in theatrical cut 
Uh, but with that being said, I was so amped for 2018 when it came out, and it still remains as one of my favorites. So I have to go ahead and pick 2018 in my matchup here. So I'm going Halloween 2018 over Halloween 6. Uh, this is close for me, man. I mm-hmm. I really, really like the producer's cut for Halloween 6. Like I probably have it way higher on my list of favorite Halloween films than most people do. Um, yeah. I don't really know why. I just think you get more Donald Pleasance, and I know you lose the the big massacre scene, but in terms of story narrative, I feel like the producer's cut works better. Um, you know, Jamie lasts a little longer, but maybe gets yeah. killed in a far dumber way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I really enjoy Six. That being said, uh, we're not doing necessarily your favorite movie, but what you think yeah. is the better movie and when you're talking about writing, production quality, cinematography, uh, the score, um, Halloween 2018 wins and probably yeah. probably fairly uh, easily, mm-hmm. uh, even though I really like six, the producer's cut. I just think there's a there's a bunch of round one uh, matchups that I think are fairly easy to think who's going to come out on top. Although yeah. I think I might have been wrong about one of them. So mm-hmm. um, we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah. let's go on to the... Second matchup, which featured Halloween Kills versus Rob Zombie's Halloween 1. I feel like I know which one you're going with, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is an easy easy one for me. Um, taking Kills over Rob Zombie. Um, it's Rob Zombie's is a fairly decent remake. He just, you know, he puts his touch on it. Um, once you get past that beginning and the backstory, you get a little bit more true to what 78 was as far as like storyline. Um, it plays out, you know, a little bit differently, but it still kind of has the DNA of 78 kind of attached to it. So, um, you know, I'll give bonus points for that. But, uh, once again, I was amped up for kills when that was coming out. I uh, went and saw it, I believe three times in theaters, just like, uh, 2018. And, um, after third viewing again, it kind of, uh, sat with me pretty well. I figured I was satisfied and, um, you know, kills works for me uh, in enough sense to uh, take the win here over Rob Zombie's Halloween. You monster. Uh, interestingly enough, I think Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 has grown on me more over time than than Rob Zombie's Halloween 1. Now, probably for really bad reasons, but it's grown mm-hmm. nevertheless. Um, uh, it's Halloween Kills for me. And again, Halloween Kills for me is a little bit of a regrettable experience. Uh, we should have went and seen it at a much better movie theater. The audio was terrible. It definitely ruined the enjoyment of the first experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but every time I watch it, man, I, I like the movie yeah. more and more. And I think that's a positive sign. I do. Um, so yeah, it, it's kills for me. And uh, to me, this is more of a landslide uh, win than, than um, 2018 was over six. Yeah. I would say that um, rewatching kills. I think the pace kind of calms down when you get used to how the movie goes. So uh, yeah, I, I can definitely, um, I can see your point and I can definitely agree that it's kills. Halloween five versus Rob zombies. Halloween two. I will openly admit, I don't know where you're going with this one. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to have to just go off of nostalgia with Halloween five coming out in 89 and being something I grew up with and have seen multiple times. It doesn't fix the problems, but um. You know, it's more of an original staple for me um, going back every Halloween and watching these during October. Um, it, it's a fun watch. You know, it's it's not great. Like Steve said, they're both awful. <laughs> um, but, you know, you get laughability out of them at least. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought Freddie would pick uh, H2 over H5. Uh, it's not surprising. But um, I will give, uh, you know, bonus points where it's due for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and that opening if that was not a dream sequence and the rest of that movie played out in similar terms, there was a lot of potential for a good movie there. But, you know, that's short compared to kind of the entertainment value, even if it's little, uh, that I get from Halloween 5. So I got to take 5. Oh, man, this is tough. I've thought about this all day because they're right down at the bottom of the barrel for me. Yeah. Um, but if I have to choose what is the better made movie, then I have to go with Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. 
Yeah, that's I mean, fair. The cinematography is better in it. The sound design is better in it. Mm. But more importantly, Michael, even though the look might not be great, I enjoy him more in this movie than I do in Halloween 5. I hate the look in 5. I hate yeah, bad. 5. If you have to make me choose between the hobo look and the way he looks in Halloween 5, I'm still going with the hobo look. But then you have, well, Halloween 5 still has Donald Pleasance. Right. And it still has uh, um, Bo Star Sheriff Meeker. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, those are big wins. And Rachel's in it for a very short amount of time. Yeah. Um, Danielle Harris is in it, although I, I think they really limited what she could do in that film. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the, the police officer shit. Yeah, it's bad. The score, the carny stuff. Like mm-hmm. at least in terms of like take the Halloween title off of. Uh, Halloween Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and I think most people would find it as you know an intriguing horror movie and it was an intriguing modern horror movie um yep. but specifically the dream sequence from the beginning mm-hmm. I fucking love I think it's yep. great I think it is far and away the best thing Rob Zombie does in both of his movies mm-hmm. um it's excellent you know I know my people don't like Michael making noise as he's stabbing but like uh, I I dug it I, I loved what they did there. So I got to go Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Yeah. Um, fair points again. Uh, I, I can see people not enjoying or, or agreeing with, you know, the grunts and everything, but I, I think it's so minimal. It's kind of forgivable. Um, but yeah, the opening sequence and right there. Yep. Brad Dorf, uh, both of those steal the show for the rest of the movie. It just sucks that the rest didn't pan out that way. You know, I sat there and I had to go, Okay, so I love Bo Star as Meeker. I do. I think he's better than Brackett. I just love the chemistry on screen between him and Pleasance. Um, but it's like, hey, that still had Meeker and that still had Loomis. Mm-hmm. But what Freddie pointed out, Brad Dorf, Halloween yeah. 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 anyways, he's incredible in this movie. Like, just so fucking good. And hey, Jamie Lee Curtis lovers might not like this, but Scout Taylor Compton is also very good in this movie, even if you don't agree with story decisions that they make. Yeah. Um, and, and to me, no different than um, uh, the fellow that played Corey in Halloween Ends. I always forget his name. But like, say what you want about the movie. His acting performance was fantastic. He did his mm-hmm. job. He did what he was paid yeah. to do. Exactly. Uh, and so when I had, like, you know, that kind of balances the scale a little bit for me. Yeah, there's nostalgia with mm-hmm. getting to see Loomis on screen and Jamie's still there and um, just the god awful handling of Rachel in the movie. It's yeah. I go Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Yeah, it's fair. I I can see. Uh, Steve agrees about Scout. Yeah, I don't think she gets the credit she deserves. Frankly, no. Uh, and then our last matchup from round one: Dean's favorite, heavyweight oh. tilt. Halloween ends versus Halloween Resurrection. Oh. Man, this is a um, tough one. <laughs> now, hey, you could be so against the story decisions in Halloween Ends that mm-hmm. Halloween Resurrection makes more sense. I totally get it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. This this is tough because they went for modern day, you know, internet age and appealing to a modern audience in Halloween Resurrection. Then in Ends, they try to go new new direction, new story, while tying into a trilogy. And at least it keeps in line with the way that 2018 and kills look, how they sound and how they're shot. So this is tough. Um, and I think I might have to agree with Freddie here. I think ends not by far. If I'm picking in this bracket and I'm going on a, a well, well-made movie and a better made movie, I'm probably going to go Halloween ends, which is going to surprise probably quite a few people just because exactly. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> Just because Resurrection is just, it is, it's dumb. If, if I'm picking what I would watch, I'll probably watch Resurrection just for laughability. Um, but the better made movie up between those two has got to be ends. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I think both movies, though, uh, you know, story aside, which I don't like in, in either movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Halloween Resurrection was ahead of its time. You know, I think if they would have had better execution on the whole uh, web streaming thing, um, a little better quality, maybe less carny with the Buster Rhyme shit. Yeah, Jesus. If we could just forget the whole Lori bit at the beginning, mm-hmm. you might have just a decent standalone Halloween movie. 
Um, with Halloween ends, I disagree with the story decisions. I disagree with the fan fiction style that they went to make uh, the movie in terms of the writing process that they used. Mm. Uh, the marketing was a complete lie. Like it was a facade. Yeah. I was looking at some of the marketing today, actually. I was going through some of my files and clearing room. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, they totally didn't advertise this as the rematch of the century or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, the final showdown. Um, it's it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. That being said, this the sound design in Halloween Ends might be the best of any Halloween movie. I'm just being honest. Yeah, it's up there. The photography is fucking great, and the acting mm -hmm. is phenomenal. The problem for me is... I disagree with the handling of the main reason we all go to see these movies, right. Myers, mm -hmm. and the story points. Even yeah. like Laurie Strode's character, it's like, wait, you're just all of a sudden happy and giddy? Like my mm -hmm. my fucking ass. Yeah, that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, at least not for most people. Um, and in a series that was supposed to be grounded in realism, that that yeah. kind of takes you out of it a bit. Um, so like. I think it was Steve that said earlier in the chat, oh my God, someone's got to win this matchup. Yeah. Um, I'm going Halloween ends because I just think the story decisions are so god awful. It brings the movie down so much. Um, and yet the technical side of things, I think they knocked out of the park. Yeah, I would agree. Um, when it comes to Lori, now that we've seen the whole trilogy, it's been around for, you know, the better part of five years, you know, over a year for ends. Um, if you take Laurie's character arc and you kind of flip it and you take Laurie from ends and put that in 2018 where she's, you know, moved on and giddy and happy go lucky. Then she goes through what she goes through in 2018. You know, she could probably still have the, you know, the, she hears that Michael's getting out. Maybe she was still following him being locked up and curious to, if he would ever break out and there could be a level of preparedness that she still had. But if you take ends, Lori, put it in 2018 and then take 2018 Lori and put that in ends where she's like ramped up and, and ready to go. I think it makes more sense. Minus the fact that they went with the story they went with in ends and they, they turned it into a Corey story. So it, I think with a couple, couple subtle changes, you, you reverse her character arc a little bit. And I think, it makes a lot more sense instead of the way that we got it. Yeah, no, I would, I would tend to agree with that. Um, yeah. That being said, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the results here and see who is going to uh, round number two. Um, just pulling them up now. And it looks as if uh, we gave people a little extra time to vote than what was intended. Mm -hmm. um it, halloween five ended up having a combined um where are we here uh see it doesn't tell me it just tells me the percentage on twitter which is not helpful ah, yeah uh, um well combining the two so maybe we'll stick to the facebook one since it's been up much longer mm -hmm. uh halloween five um has a uh a commanding lead of uh, wow. 44 votes to 12 over uh rob zombies halloween obviously it's a small number of votes given the amount of time that was given mm -hmm. um but i honestly thought rob zombies halloween 2 would be neck and neck in this match and it wasn't even close halloween 5 curb stomped it wow a little surprising, a little surprising. Uh, yeah no i i think it's um I, I i don't i just thought that one would be closer man especially when mm -hmm. i'm sitting there doing the bracket going you know i could see this one being you know neither of these movies are going to win but the first matchup could be interesting and it wasn't yeah. Um, Halloween ends versus Halloween resurrection, uh, basically two to one in votes. Halloween ends with 123 wow. compared to Halloween resurrections, 65. Uh, so Halloween ends moves on to take on Halloween H2O in round two. Halloween five will be taken on Halloween four in round two. Uh, we have Halloween kills, which, uh, had basically four to one votes, over uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween one. So Halloween Kills is going to go up against Halloween 2 in round two. And I think that one could be a much closer matchup. Oh, yeah. And then Halloween 2018, basically three to one in votes over Halloween 6, the producer's cut, which sets us up next week 
for Halloween three versus Halloween 2018. That one could end up being close. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween kills versus Halloween two, Halloween five versus Halloween four, and Halloween ends versus Halloween H two O. Those uh, those polls will go up tomorrow. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, uh, enjoy them and we'll get all sorts of feedback. What we might do is put a couple of them on, uh, Twitter and then a couple of them on Facebook. And then if you want to vote on them, go to Twitter for two of the matchups and then Facebook for two of the other ones. That way we don't get numbers confused or anything. Yeah. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, Halloween March Madness round one in the books. We have Halloween 2018, Halloween kills, Halloween five and Halloween ends all moving on to round two two uh which brings us to some scream new or scream rumors man mm -hmm. uh there's a few things out there apparently casting might yeah. be going on uh underway um i know critical overlords covered some things daniel rpk has covered some things i'll say this about daniel rpk um he has a good track record but from my experience a lot of his information is taken from other places and presented as his own mm -hmm. uh, which definitely rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Uh, yeah. But uh, the the big things that were coming of this were that um, Gail Weathers' character would be returning, mm -hmm. uh, which I have my own take on. And then, uh, um, yes, just for me. Um, and then, sorry, guys. Um, and then uh, Patrick Dempsey is apparently close to Signing on one of those I like, and one of those uh, I don't. It also listed that three new mains would be uh, cat. Mm -hmm. My hope was always we time jump a little bit, and some of Sydney's kids are, are teenagers, and right. cast them in the movie, put stakes on it, cast their mm -hmm. friends in the movie, um, and then have Sydney and and um, Patrick Dempsey involved. Right. I got to be honest, I don't want to see Courtney Cox in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh I, I don't like her character at all um uh, and i never have sorry for all the gail and dewey fans out there but like to me she makes she's one of the elements that makes these movies carny mm -hmm. and i thought that you had a really good chance to do something more serious in tone here and do something a little more secluded um but maybe they want to stick with that screen formula i thought six was heading that way for the first Two thirds of the film, and I thought we avoided the carny shit for the first two thirds of the film, and then we got to that last third of the film, and it was like super carny shit instead of just yeah. And it was like, oh god, you almost did it. Um, and so this news is a little upsetting because it sort of feels like we're going back, not necessarily to do the same movie, but the same type of movie that we've gotten before. And I hope I'm wrong about that. Uh, I just don't think you need her character, and if you have her. Kill her in the fucking opening scene mm -hmm. the same way that you did. Um, oh, help me out here. Um, oh, Samara Weaving. No, no. Um, uh, Scream 3. Her. Oh. Um, Lee Schreiber's character. I can't remember his name. Uh, Cotton. Cotton, Cotton Weary. Yeah, so like, I would have liked to see more of Cotton, but they chose to bring yeah. him back for 3 and kill him off in the opening sequence. Mm -hmm. Do that with Gail. She should have died in the last fucking movie. Yep. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe people think I'm just hating, but like, I, I want to see these movies have some stakes. They can reach another level if you put some fucking stakes in them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take off the uh, the the plot armor of, of some mm -hmm. of these characters. So, I don't know. Your take on the Scream rumors and if you believe them or not. Um, They're early. They're coming out now. Some of them, are, they're not very surprising. Um, so, I, it's, I could see it panning out and, and becoming official probably pretty soon. Um, I agree with the decision to kill off Gale in the opening. Um, that would probably set the tone. That'll probably get the fan base. If, if it opens up and you see her on screen in the beginning, the fans are probably going to be like, oh no, you know, they're going to kill Gale in the opening. Now, do they save her and they kill her off later in the movie to kind of throw a curveball? Maybe. Um, I think it was a mistake at the end of six, you know, you know, Gail, Gail survives. However, I forget how they announced it, but it was made known that she survived. Uh, poor decision. She should have been killed off. You should have killed Dewey in five and Gail in six and kept that streak going. Um, I can see Patrick Dempsey coming back. Uh, it would be a great pairing with Nev Campbell. And then we get more of a story with uh, Mark and Sydney. So I think that would work. Um, and then in regards to the, the other cast members possibly joining that we don't know of yet. Uh, one is rumored. It was mentioned in the chat, but I heard earlier today, 
uh, yeah, somebody from the, the newer Halloween trilogy might be involved. Um, I don't, I don't really have too many choices of who it could be, but the first one I thought of right off, right off the bat was, um, Judy Greer. I think we might see Judy Greer come in and play some sort of character, um, possibly Rohan Campbell. Um, they're probably my top two that I would pick from maybe Andy Matichak. Um, and it kind of, that, that's where it stops for me. I, I think everybody else kind of has, uh, a lot of screen time under their belt with other projects. So, um, if I was to pick, it'd probably be some of the up and comers. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, I think they both be solid choices. Um, I think Roland Campbell, if he brought the same level of performance he brought in Halloween ends would be mm -hmm. fantastic. If the movie's going to be the right tone for that. Yeah. Um, you know, the guy clearly showed that he has incredible range. Uh, and I would love it for it to be him. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wouldn't be shocked to see, oh, well, it's Will Patton and he's playing a cop or something like that. Right. right? Which is not a bad thing. Will Patton's a great actor. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think there's a lot of people just jump into the conclusion that it's Rowan Campbell, whether mm -hmm. it's to stir up the fan base or cause online yeah. drama. Uh, or, you know, that it's just a reasonable conclusion. Andy Matichuk would be interested interesting mm -hmm. but i would think both of their um um both of them as performers and actors would probably be leery about signing on to do scream seven yeah. just because of the backlash that's already out there but also trying to avoid being typecast as well mm -hmm. um doesn't mean they wouldn't do it everybody has a a, a price right most, oh, yeah. most people do so um i i'd watch that with definitely great interest and intrigue but like the possibilities are rel relatively endless in terms of who it could be. Um, the guy who played Cameron is certainly possible too. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the actor's name, but like he was in you, he was fantastic mm -hmm. in you. So, um, uh, so many good possibilities. I'm yeah. curious to see where they go. Yeah. Same. Um, like I said, there, I put my picks out there of who I, I think it might be, but, uh, throwing Cameron in there. Uh, that's a, that's another one that I could see, uh, possibly joining that, that cast. Uh, Jason says he wouldn't be opposed to Rowan Campbell or Andy Matichuk. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis has a hand cameo in his kill. Oh, God, no, please, no. Uh, <laughs> of her. Uh, uh, any news on possible release date for a new Halloween series? I will say this. A lot of people, just because of the interview that was done with the head of Miramax, keep saying that 2025 is possible, 2025 mm -hmm. is possible, which I mean, it's already kind of a batshit year for, for movies and shows um, that I wouldn't rule it out. But I think when you look at um the development cycle and where they are at the in the process right now that we know about um that i still think the safe bet is 2026 mm -hmm. uh, also given when the strikes are coming up but hey i wouldn't rule out 2025 no i wouldn't either um it, it kind of seems like they have things painting out and moving forward a lot a little bit quicker maybe not a lot but a, a little bit quicker than i i expected so uh we're, we're about to hit april and that gives us yeah about seven months seven, yeah, seven or eight till the end of this year so they can get a lot of ideas in place uh if they were to start shooting early next year we could possibly see it by october uh in 2025 and i think between the end of this year and into next year i think we're looking at 50 new horror films uh alone not you know not all big theater releases and stuff but i think there's like 50 new horror films on the slate uh for the end of the rest of this year and getting into 2025 as we know it for now. So 2025 is going to be huge. And we've been saying that here for months. Do you remember if the quiet place prequel is this year or next year? That I, I don't remember, but I'd probably lump it into next year. That, that would make, I think more sense that we'd see that next year. Uh, this isn't horror related, but I have to bring it up because it went from, mm -hmm. from crazy out there, rumor to rumor to now confirmed by deadline. Um, Happy Gilmore is getting, oh, yeah, sequel mm -hmm. um from the time i seen that movie i mean i'm also a big hockey fan um it's been my favorite adam sandler movie my whole mm -hmm. life but i also know when you go back and do sequels to comedies that happened a long time ago yeah. they usually fall flat on their face and mm -hmm. adam sandler hasn't done many super successful comedies lately he's definitely right. had some great roles where they're non-comedic Mm -hmm. um or uh he's also had success in animation as well but i don't know it feels like the time's kind of passed for this i used to joke around with my buddies and say you know what i don't think a sequel to halloween or halloween i don't think a sequel to happy gilmore to uh, happy, happy gilmore works mm -hmm. 
but the one thing you could sell me on is like this almost terrible B movie of Shooter McGavin and where his life went after what yeah. happened there. I'd find that funny. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen there. Obviously, Bob Barker's passed on. Carl Weathers yeah. just passed on. Uh, but this is apparently a thing and it's mm -hmm. apparently happening. So, um, and it's involved with Netflix as well. So, no doubt Netflix is paying a Oh, yeah. pretty penny for Sandler to even consider doing this, but mm -hmm. uh, the actor that plays Shooter McGavin obviously wouldn't come out and say it's shit either, but he said he got a chance to see the script, and he really likes it, so mm -hmm. I don't know if you're a Happy Gilmore fan, man. I was a big oh, yeah. Happy Gilmore fan, but I'm still totally expecting this thing to be an utter train wreck. I hope it's Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, positive hopes, at least. I remember when that rumor came out, and then it was kind of debunked at the time that no it's not going to happen then like almost a year later it kind of popped back up and now it, it's not surprising that it's something that they're going to do and then put right to streaming um makes a lot of sense yeah it's it's really hard to recapture the magic from the original um it it might work it, it's probably going to be just something silly to throw on and and you'll get some some fun callbacks and, and jokes in there but nothing crazy um just a you know probably quick 90 minutes of entertainment uh honestly i, I hope it's a happy and shooter movie uh you yeah. don't need to do a bunch of new movies have some tournament where like maybe they both didn't play or I, I imagine happy didn't play golf too much longer after that right is what they'll go with i don't think he went and played a full career regardless of his success or not uh um, right. it'd be cool to be like you know put those two characters back together mm -hmm. and they have to be involved on the, like the same team in a tournament or something yeah uh, um I don't know. Uh, but again, I think a Shooter McGavin movie would work. Happy Gilmore, I'm not so sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll see. Anyways, that leads us to our final topic of the night. The main event. The first time it's been the main event on yeah. Titan Haddonfield. And I mean, it's perfect timing considering uh, look at that setup behind them, the improved lighting. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's coming. We've not talked about it. So uh, it's time for some show, share, and slash. All right, Dean, what do you have in store for us this week, man? All right. So there's something coming out tomorrow. It's getting a very limited theater run. I may trek out to go see it. Um, I believe it's one show time at every theater that I have checked anywhere close to me. So I have one shot to go see it in theaters if I want to. Um, I saw the one last year in theaters. Um, it's dumb, fun horror. It's spawning an entire universe and uh, a lot of people are kind of mixed on that, but I figured the timing is kind of right. And I have a fairly decent um, edition of this. Uh, this comes from umbrella entertainment. Once again, this is a Blu-ray set, not 4k. Uh, the only way this was done in 4k was I think uh, overseas release somewhere. And I, I wasn't able to track it down. I uh, didn't feel the need to, cause I was happy with, um, with this release right here. And we have, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, um, Umbrella, Blu-ray, uh, Rigid Box set. There's a couple things in here. It's not too crazy. Um, they did art cards. I will get into these quotes on the back in a second because they these are funny, and uh, you'll see why in a moment. But, um, yeah, this comes from Umbrella. They, I believe, were the first label to announce that they were going to do a Blu-ray for this movie when it came out. Uh, so I kind of jumped on it, grabbed the pre-order, I think this is only about 55 bucks US um, for the collector's edition. Sorry, I got to so, jump in here for a second. Yeah. <laughs> that looks fan fucking tastic in terms of yeah. like what it's supposed to be and what like the outer mm -hmm. case, uh, the, the Winnie the Pooh rip, obviously. Yep. Um, it, it From a distance, it looks like a child's book. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, um, you know, they knocked the, the packaging out of the park for this. It looks like a kid's book. Um, very cool. Uh, even on the top, it, it literally has the printed kind of uh, the effect of the pages, top and bottom. So that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, let's get into this. So as you said, kind of storybook look to it. Um, inside our case here is a whole bunch of art cards. I guess since we have the time, I will go through all of these uh, fairly quickly, but there's a ton of movie shots in the uh, stack of art cards here. I forget how many it is, but there is a lot. Um, and speaking of storybooks, there is one included. <laughs> um, this is basically 
Uh, not much on the back. Oh, I have to go back. Yeah, they did a children's style um, storybook for this. And it's it's like literally kid style, like the, the large font, the short pages. And it's kind of like a quick, I guess you could call these like cliff notes of uh, the movie. Let's try to get my glare off this lighting. But yeah, um, it's not too long. It's probably about 20 or 25 pages. But every every page is, is short in text like that. And it kind of, um, it, it's about, it's basically cliff notes on the movie and then you have all the illustrated art on the uh the opposite page so this this was cool this was a cool little inclusion um i read through this thing real quick when i first got it but uh it's it, it's like a quick reference guide to the movie uh which was pretty cool Graphics i didn't think i've ever seen a christopher robin in my life yeah yeah um so yeah and then you got poo on the back eating a uh blood-filled honey pot <laughs> very cool um, so yeah, umbrella threw that in. That was cool. Uh, let's come back to the case really quick because these are awesome. So when this was coming out, the backlash online was, was pretty crazy. You know, it ruined my childhood and how could they do that? How can they take such a fun loving character and, and turn him into this like murderous killer? Um, and what umbrella did was get quotes from people who were so disappointed and they put them on the back of the case. <laughs> so you've got all of these pissed off quotes from i don't know if it's random people um or where they pulled these from but you just had uh, the one at the bottom is my favorite absolutely disgusting and shocking spoiling <laughs> or yeah you know a beautiful kid's story what's that um, person's name uh, at the bottom lillian ironside so um yeah i, I just i cracked up when i got this in and, and i pulled the j card off the back because there was a j card attached to the back here that covered all those so to see all of these uh these pissed off quotes on the back um that was funny that was funny to see them print that on the back of the case and include that on the back of the box. An author. <laughs> oh okay so yeah so they probably got some notable people um <laughs> who were pissed off about it That's um yes yeah, it's uh, just such a nice touch. Hey, hey, there's a troll done with class. Exactly. <laughs> it can be done. So uh, we'll get into the case here. Um, movie poster front. Uh, this was another one that Umbrella did the double-sided where they removed the, uh, the age logo from this lower corner here. Um, there's a couple special features on here we'll touch on really quick. It comes with an audio commentary uh, from the director and the cinematographer. A few behind-the-scenes uh, featurettes, um, some bloopers, some deleted scenes, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Violins and Honey. That was actually a really cool feature where they covered the score and the way it was done. And I think, if I remember correctly, they took a, a violin and they sat it out uh, and filled it with honey and whatever would attract bees to it. And the bees flew into it and built an entire hive inside of the violin that they were going to use for the score then they removed all the bees and then they used that violin to do the score for the movie so that was pretty cool and that's a that's a really interesting feature right to see the way that they did that um yeah so that's the, yeah very artistic um so that's the case not a whole lot going on there but they did give us a flip out poster here uh yeah double-sided so you've got the traditional movie poster and then on the back is the alternate. Um, that's actually a really cool shot. That's I think I like the cool. alternate. Yeah, it's cool. And to really see that shot, it. yeah, it's real cool. And at the end of the movie, you see that shot. In the movie, he just picks that girl's heads up uh, or her head up and, and shows it to uh, one of the remaining characters at the end. So that's a real cool shot. I forgot they did that as a poster as well. Um, and then we have this huge stack of art cards. So let's get one out. Um, there's Pooh in the car from the car kill. If you haven't seen it, I won't spoil all of it, but um, kill somebody with a car. Uh, let's get the band off because there is a lot of cards to get through here. Uh, another shot of Pooh. Shot of Piglet. The Hundred Acre Woods sign. Bloody shot of Pooh. Tons of Pooh shots in here. Pretty what? funny. Go ahead. Oh, coughing out a lung. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> um, one day someone's gonna put this on for their kids, thinking it's a. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah. Like, hey, that's the uh, from the book. That's cool. 
Yeah. Oh, that's what a bunch of these are. Uh, let's make sure I get them. Okay, so they, those are movie shots. All right, so this is cool. And this is all the shots from in the book. They did them as separate art cards. Oh, so that's, that's cool. All. I forgot yeah. that they did that. Yeah, It'd so. Good little, uh, like we had frames for them, good little uh, things to put yeah. up. Yeah. And that sort of thing. If I was to do anything, I'd probably get one large frame and try to space them out and, and do all of them one big one instead of a bunch of separates. But uh, yeah, I forgot that they did this. I knew they did movie shots. And that's why I was wondering, why is this stack so big? I really um, like that. Yeah, they included all of the uh, the illustrations from the, the kids' book that they did, uh, packed in there with the rest of it. Those illustra illustrations, yeah, those illustrations are really well done. Yeah, I mean, I loved kids' books as a kid. Like, I, I loved looking at yeah. them, and them and how they looked, and like, this is fantastic. I was more of a uh, visual. I would look through all the pictures before I would read any kind of book or anything. But yeah. Oh, uh, and that is the so final. Or number two. Yeah. Um, I think they, they, in the beginning of this, they killed him off. And I think he was spared for food in the beginning. So to make up for that, they brought in Tigger. They brought in Owl. Um, Piglet survives his, his, de his death, I guess we'll refer to it as. Uh, in the first one was kind of questionable. And I thought they kind of saved him uh, for the sequel. And I was correct. Um, so, yeah, showing this off, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 is getting its theater release tomorrow. So I might have to trek out and go to see that. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, that is Umbrella Entertainment's Blu-ray collector's edition release of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. There's a ton of just creative artistic value in that set. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie yet. I intended to. I'll still get around to seeing it. Um you know, I don't think it's anything I'd go out to buy a collector's edition of, but like yeah. in terms of the quality they put out there, like it's it's really well done. That's the type of stuff that a lot of people hope that their you know fan favorite big franchise movies get and mm -hmm. get treatment like that. And most of the time they don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I really dug that, man. And more importantly, I really dig the setup too. It looks badass. Thank you. How yeah. much time have you put into that so far? Uh a few days actually, because buying the new shelving, having to put it together. And then shift things around and, and line it up on this wall. Like um, you guys can see the two shelves to my right. There's a third one off screen in front of me. Um, it's full of some collectibles and stuff now. I bought a display cabinet for that stuff. So that is now up and I'm putting the finishing touches on that so that I can move the collectibles into that cabinet and then utilize that shelf uh, to expand. And the big tall glass cabinet behind me that's like sci-fi action horror and some other stuff that's going to move up to the front shelf and then i'm probably going to shift some other stuff into that uh that tall glass cabinet behind me so i'm trying to create some shelf space because i have so much stuff coming in and um i ran out of room so until i did this uh my shelves are overflowing and i was like okay what am i going to do now so it was time to uh to kind of extend and expand the collection and I finally was able to get around to it. So um, it's a work in progress as far as organization, but uh, the bulk of it is done and in place. And uh, I can continue to expand now. And um, you guys will now be able to see this every week. And uh, yeah, uh, show and tell will be um, a little bit easier for me. I can kind of reach next to me and, and I've got to dig through stuff and get stuff out to do show and tells. Oh, it looks badass, man. Uh, definitely can't wait to dive into to more of that. And uh uh, it looks like you got yourself almost like a little control center type setup, yeah. you know, almost like yeah. an office area. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's badass. Anyways, though, uh, that is going to do it for us tonight. Uh, it was going to be a shorter show, but we still almost won an hour. So yeah, uh, it was it was fun, and I didn't expect a, a Winnie the Pooh collector's edition to be that good. And I'm mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors that make all this possible. Uh, Jesse from Jesse Storytime Spectacular. Jason Knight from Backtrack Cinema, Mr. Matt Whitfield, Ryan from Colleague Nation, and uh, Chris Christensen, who's going to be on the channel again here shortly, doing a Rob Zombie's Halloween mask. We still got to create more ways to do the giveaways, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be doing this for probably the next month, month and a half, figuring out ways for you guys to enter the giveaway for the mask that gets made here on the show by Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, like, comment, subscribe, helps battle the algorithm. YouTube's changing all the time, unless you're one of the big wigs with a, a ton of support or you're pumping a bunch of your own cash into it. Um, it uh, It's hard to gain traction these days, but uh, those of you that come out and 
have fun with fun with us in the chat and support the show. We appreciate it. And uh, lots more to come uh, next week. Two shows, mm-hmm. one with the uh, Halloween Aftermath crew and then another one with Mike Bish returning, which might end up being a watch along. So uh, nice. stay tuned for details on that. If I had to guess, maybe Halloween H2O, but we'll see. Uh, right. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, Dean, where can everybody find you at, man? Uh, you guys can find me on Facebook at Dean Renner and in the Facebook Legacy of Halloween group, moderating and babysitting and all of that fun stuff. Um, it's, it's calmed down a little bit, but, um, you know, still some work to be done. Uh, you want to support the channel on another level? You can do so patreon.com slash fandom empire. Join today. Uh, we just recorded a brand new episode of House of the Empire, which will go out tomorrow. Uh, we broke down both trailers. That's right. Uh, House of the Dragon decided we're not going to release just one trailer. We're going to release two trailers at the same time, uh, wow. representing each point of view. So definitely a new marketing tactic there. And I'm sure a bunch of big Hollywood industries are going, uh, or, uh, corporations are going, oh, why didn't we do that? Um, so it's been met with uh, just a lot of success, and uh, we dove into that. And then earlier tonight, we revealed our Halloween March Madness bracket. Halloween 2018 prevailed over Halloween 6, the producer's cut. Halloween si- or Halloween Kills won over Rob Zombie's Halloween 1. Halloween 5 defeated Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. And Halloween Ends beat Halloween Resurrection, setting up for Halloween 3 against Halloween 2018, Halloween 2 against Halloween Kills, Halloween 4 against Halloween 5, and Halloween H2O against Halloween Ends, with voting opening tomorrow on Facebook and Twitter, uh, or X, or whatever the hell it's called this week. So be on the lookout for that. Big thanks to our mods in the chat uh, for helping out when they do, and uh, to our patrons. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here doing what we do as often as we do it. Uh, that's going to do it for us. See you next week. Have a great week. Dean's going to need more shelving. Yes. <laughs>